speaking about uh, the reading of the Old Testament and how people respond to it, how the children of Israel responded to it and even still respond to it today. It even applies to us. In verse 14, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 14 says, But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies in their hearts. There are Christians today, pastors that we respect in America, who are introducing, sneaking in Judaism, claiming to be preaching the gospel. The one thing that Christ came to take away, they are reintroducing it. And as they are reintroducing Judaism, the veil is coming back. And many of us cannot see. So we get engaged and involved in ritualism rather than what God really wants, the relationship from the heart. In verse 16 it says, Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is what? Taken away. So what must happen if the veil is to be taken away? We must turn to the Lord. Is that not so? It follows that if we do not turn to the Lord, what happens? The veil remains. So we have a situation where in the church of God, there is the ritual of church and the veil stays. Whereas what Christ wants is that we turn to him, the veil is removed, and we enter into a, 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 a time of liberty. Let's continue to read. You will see what we're saying now. In verse 7 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit. As far as the reading of the Old Testament was concerned, they read it without the Spirit. They said, But the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. But we all, with unveiled or open faces, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. The only way we can get to the place of being changed to the image of Christ, which is the essence of relationship, because in relationship you begin to relate. The men who have said it that when husband and wife stay together for some time, after a while, they, they, you, you cannot tell the difference, they start looking alike. Now imagine you and Christ being together, seeing yourselves regularly, having conversation regularly, communion regularly. What do you think will happen? You have to look like him. But we have a situation where majority of the people in the church don't even look anything like the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes they dress like their pastor. They talk like their pastor. They have the mannerisms of their pastor, but nothing like the Lord Jesus Christ. What we have is ritualism taking place. People are just engaging in rituals. At the end of the day, they go to a meeting and nothing has changed in their lives. It was that is that kind of a meeting that they went for in Israel when the Lord Jesus stood up and shouted. Anyone who is still thirsty, let him come to me and I will give him to drink. And the Bible says it was referring to the Holy Spirit. So we see that in rituals, the Spirit of God is absent. It is all human effort. There is a lot of motion but no movement. A lot of noise but of no effect. The, 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 the Bible tells us that those people, they made, because of what they were doing, they made the word of God to be of no effect. They effectively neutralize it. Rituals effectively neutralize the liberty that we are supposed to have under the new covenant. 
And unless we do something about it, we will all go to church every Sunday. We will come out of church every Sunday and we will continue. It will just be doing things by rote. You will look at your life, nothing has changed. Of course, when you come to church, the pastor will try and energize you. They will try and get some people to come and give testimony. They will give their testimony. You will clap, you will shout, you will jump up. But when you go, inside of you, there is bitterness. There is sadness, there is sorrow. You will be wondering, how are these people getting this thing? And you are not getting it. And before long, you might join them in that direction. Some of these people, they just steal money and come and give testimony of how God blessed them. And you are working hard, trusting God. And God is patiently pushing you along, knowing that a time will come when He will bless you abundantly. But you are hearing people who are barely how many days in, in, in Christ. And they are talking of humongous amounts that God is blessing them with. And the pastor is there cheering them on, and they are even telling you who has been serving God. That you see, people are not following them, they are not following the word of God. See, young, young people are the ones following the word of God, but those people, you don't know what they do. In John chapter 4, when the Samaritan woman met with the Lord Jesus Christ, a conversation ensued, and we want to look at that conversation from verse 19. We we'll stop at verse 24. The woman said to him, that is, to the Lord Jesus Christ, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipper will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and... You cannot worship God in the flesh. In fact, it's not called worship. You can call it whatever you want to call it. It's not worship. God doesn't really look at it. It has no acceptance. When we talk of relationship, it requires, number one, that you get to know the person. You cannot lay claim to having a relationship with someone you don't know. In knowing that person, you want to know what he likes, what he does not like. Why does he like this thing? Why does he not like this thing? Relationship gets you to know more about the person. Do you understand? Than his acts. Rituals make us to just look at the acts without the reason for the acts. I think it's, uh, is this Psalm 105 or so that tells us about Moses and the children of Israel. The Bible says that Moses knew the ways of God. The children of Israel saw his acts. They were satisfied with drinking water. How the water came about was not their business. They were okay with eating food. How the food came about was none of their business. And because we get to that place, we cannot have a relationship. When the Lord told Moses, look, you, 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 the people you are leading, they are still there. Just go. I will get an angel. And that angel was in capital A. So he's not talking of just a mere angel. He's talking of the Son of God following this. I will get the Son of God. He said, no, 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 no. If you will not go with us, then let us not go any further. Moses understood relationship over rituals. The children of Israel were satisfied with rituals. What we do in our churches is ritual. People just come. Nobody is being taught to pray. The pastor will say, I let me pray for all of you. Everybody will stand. Then he will pray for them. And they are satisfied. And then they go. They won't pray. They don't know God. Nothing whatsoever personal. Everything is dependent on the pastor. That's not what God intended for the New Testament. His intention was a personal relationship with each individual. 